A common debate among fans is whether or not it was a good idea for Omniverse to retcon Kevin's backstory into being a mutant, opposed to his UAF backstory where he is half alien. Although, some will claim that it was in fact UAF that started the retcon first, as in the classic series, Kevin was allegedly a mutant to begin with. So, which one really came first? mutant or alien. To figure this out, let's take a look at the classic series and study the history of Kevin that we were originally given. There isn't any. This video is going to break down the true, concrete origin of Kevin's powers, but from a production standpoint. I've been working on this video for quite some time now, as it's a very touchy and complicated subject. I was just about finished with this video before I came across some new, game-changing information. This new information made me want to rework this video completely from the ground up, and while I at first attempted to do so, I believe this video works best as is, with the new developments attached at the end, so you can really understand the wild perspective perspectives born from this debacle. So please, even if you've heard a handful of these arguments before, I'd at least advise sticking around until the end. The ride only gets more wild the longer you hold on. But first, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey hey, it's that special time of the year. You know the one. Hearts, chocolate, love, but most importantly, Raid Shadow Legends. Surprise yourself and loved ones by playing this awesome game with amazing graphics on your PC, Android, or iOS device. And if that's not enough for you, then get ready to be blasted with hella love with Raid's Valentine's Day event. But before we get into that, let me tell you about my top 3 favorite Valentine's themed champions. First we have Astralion with this badass dual swords and awesome blood colored wings. Then we have Venus with her awesome Queen of Hearts outfit suited and ready for battle. And finally we have Cupidus with his all red heavy armor matching with the blood of his enemies. If you're a new player, all you need to do is download Raid Shadow Legends from our links below, copy your in-game player ID and head over to RaidLoveQuest.Plarium.com to set out on a heartfelt quest running from February 14th to March 14th. Play one of the Valentine's themed minigames for a chance to win some awesome in-game or real-life prizes, including Valentine's themed heroes and even Amazon gift cards up to $1,000. If you're an existing Raid player, you can still go to RaidLoveQuest.Plarium.com to get a special promo code that everyone can use. One of my favorite things about the game is the awesome auto battle feature. You can set your team up with the items needed, go to your mom's house, cry about not having the valentine, and watch as your team demolishes their enemies with no interaction needed from you. And another bonus for people that hasn't played the game yet is by downloading it from the links below you can get $30 worth of bonuses, the awesome champion Chanru, as well as other useful stuff. Remember, download the game from the links below and we'll see you there. Throughout the 52 episode adventure of Ben 10 Classic, four episodes feature Kevin. In those, we don't get any background information on him beyond this brief exchange between himself and Ben. So, how'd you get your power? I was born with it. What about your family? My god, they weren't too thrilled having a freak for a son. Nothing about Kevin's past, including his family or the origin of his powers, is ever given any explanation. Classic fans never really got to know how Kevin is able to absorb energy, so as for direct canon, we can scratch off the classic series as evidence for Kevin's origin. Kevin being a mutant didn't really have any official presence outside of the show either. No pop-up trivia, no Cartoon Network website description, nothing. The only tangible proof of having anything to do with Kevin's history comes from his Bandai card, where he is listed as a human, with the word mutant in parentheses. So there you go. Problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. Character cards are notorious for their false information. Alien X's card says that the first time Ben transformed into him, he accidentally blew up a mountain range, where in the show, he reversed time to fix a dam. Cannonbolt's card says that he exclusively is native to Vulpin, and can release the chemicals in his body like an attack. In the show, we learn he is from the extinct planet of Arburia, and he never demonstrated any power aside from rolling around. Character cards can also be initially true, but changed when future episodes say otherwise. Wise. The origin of Galvin B is said to have been born from an environmental disaster, where in Omniverse we later learn it was from one of Azmuth's experiments. Koros was also depicted as a wasteland, but was later changed to a high-functioning society with tourists. And the most obvious one, Chromastone having a home planet rather than being a unique species from Petropia. So now, even outside of the classic era of the show, the one thing we have to go off of is a faulty character card, which in all honesty could have been written by 
by anyone. There is no proof any of these cards were written by people who directly worked on the show. Another example of faulty additional media comes from the Ben 10 guidebooks, which are littered with their own inconsistencies and errors as well. This brings us to Alien Force. In its early days, notably Season 1, Alien Force relied heavily on the ties it has to Classic, unapologetically referring to the lore without the need to re-explain things, and relying on the viewer to have already watched Classic to understand certain plots and references. This strongly suggests that anything about Kevin and his backstory should be heavily influenced by Classic's own lore. While it's already been proven that character cards are not a reliable source, let's humor ourselves and take a look at Kevin's Alien Force card anyways. Here, it states that Kevin is human. Strictly human with the parentheses removed. This not only shows that back then, Kevin was never identified as a mutant, but perhaps the original parentheses was there to specify Kevin's amalgam form specifically is his mutation, and not that Kevin is a mutant regardless. To touch base inside of the show, there is nothing in Classic or Early Alien Force that says Kevin is a mutant, and when merchandise is considered, he is only labeled as a mutant when his amalgam form is considered. Otherwise, he is depicted strictly as human. This shows us that Classic Kevin truly had no history, and the human label was probably there just to fill up space for his character card. Another example of filler information are the Ben 10 DVD menu extras. This is also far before crew statements had become a regular thing, so there is not any evidence from that time period either. So where did the idea of Kevin originally being called a mutant come from? We're gonna have to keep digging. As Alien Force developed, the crew decided to expand on Kevin's empty backstory. It was revealed that Kevin was half alien on his dad's side, who shared powers with him and was the ex-partner of Max Tennyson. This is where we got characters like Devin, Ragnarok, Agrigor, and the word Osmosian itself. To keep things brief, UAF spent a lot of time heavily integrating Osmosians into the overall story of Ben 10. The first two seasons of Ultimate Alien directly focused on Osmosians, their race, their abilities, and the consequences of overusing their powers. We also learned a lot about Kevin's family, childhood, and motivation for becoming a plumber. But just as UAF continued classic stories after it ended, Omniverse came next. During Omniverse's development, when the crew was much more active and reachable online, we came to know that back during the development of Classic, the writers had no solid origin for Kevin to begin with but thought of him as a mutant while writing him. But as we know, these thoughts never breached beyond their own perspective, and were not extended to series proper. As the fourth iteration of the Prime franchise, Omniverse was told by the network to rebrand the series to obtain newer, younger audiences. It was still meant to continue the canon that the three series set up, but give the show a fresh, wackier tone. But this was interpreted by some crew members to embark on a self-proclaimed mission to undo a lot of UAF's developments, and retool the show to, reportedly, be more like the classic series. Whether or not they succeeded, and Omniverse actually ended up feeling like the classic series, or it felt like its own thing entirely, is subjective to the viewer, and a topic for another time. But this ideology evolved into their motivation to bring back Kevin to his roots, and return Kevin from an alien hybrid back to a mutant. Roots that only existed in broad strokes in the mind of the classic series writers, and not within the show itself. These mutant roots were non-existent. So what roots exactly are they attempting to bring Kevin back to? But regardless, this was enough for them to eventually want to undo everything about Osmosians entirely, and the Rooters arc was born. This movement, based on the publicly available statements of the crew, seemed to place the late Derek J. Wyatt as the ringleader of this decision, who had a passion for the classic series. Derek Derek was also responsible for a lot of the positive developments of Omniverse as well. This isn't to center him as the blame for all of the Osmosian retcons, but when shining a light on all of the available crew statements, he seems to be the only one that actually had a problem with the Osmosian.
alien aliens. As another brief summary, it turns out that practically everything that the main cast of characters knew about Osmosians and Kevin's backstory was a fake memory implanted by Cervantes, as a way to cover up his failed experiments where he used Kevin as a conduit to create a squad of hybrids to take out Ben during his early years. This fake memory explanation does come with a cascade of holes and contradictions, the most notable one being Agrigor's entire arc during Ultimate Alien. There's also everyone outside of the main cast that are well versed in the concept of alien osmosians, and a lot of tangible factors in the Ben 10 universe that simply can't be a fake memory. Fastest course to Osmos 5. Plotted. Hyperdrive spinning up. While the change in Kevin's backstory was branded to be a positive thing, it felt unnecessarily spiteful towards the legacy of UAF, and hides behind the excuse that the network asked them to do so. But there's a lot of doubt cast as to how much direction the network actually gave them, and it's hard to believe that they would specifically ask them to change Kevin's origins to being a mutant. Networks tend to only care about good ratings, increasing their profits, and abiding by the broadcast standards and practices. The actual lore of the show does not seem like a strong priority. Omniverse's new art style, tone, and world building all could have remained without the self-guided need to start retconning lore. These two things do not go hand in hand. So did UAF really retcon Kevin's original mutant backstory? I'm gonna have to say no. As an example, Jesse Pinkman was written with the intention of being killed off in the first season of Breaking Bad, but not only survived, but ended up outlasting the main character and got his own spin-off film. But in-universe, there is nothing to point towards Jesse's upcoming but redacted death, even though he was initially written that way. Since the writer's intentions didn't have an effect on the canon of the story, would you consider Jesse surviving a retcon? In Avatar The Last Airbender, Momo was created to be a reincarnation of Monk Gyatso, but this idea was dropped because him acting as a legitimate animal served the story better and kept things simple. But in-universe, there is no evidence to build up a grand reveal that Momo was a Monk Gyatso reincarnation. Is that a retcon? Back to Ben 10, Kevin in Classic Series was written with the vague idea that he was some kind of mutant, but it was revealed he was actually an alien hybrid. But in canon, there is no evidence that he was originally supposed to be a mutant to begin with. He just flat out had no origin. So can we really say that UAF retconned classic series? And if you want to throw the argument that Kevin's original intention was to have an Omnitrix rather than mutant abilities, which they did get to play with in the reboot, those that believe that UAF retconned classic series will also have to say that classic series retconned itself in the first place, if we're acting like writer's ideas that do not make it into the canon is actual valid lore. UAF merely expanded on a story that wasn't there to begin with, where Omniverse went out of its way to create an entire story arc just to undo that story. UAF told the stories it did because it genuinely attempted to tell a good story. Those results, again, are subjective. But with Dwayne McDuffie at the helm, who was a pure storyteller at heart, Heart, the priorities were clear. Any changes that UAF made to the classic series were done in service of the story and not with any spite of ill will to the original lore. With Omniverse, the goal of the Rooters was entirely built on an agenda where the story came second. And it shows. If you didn't know anything behind the scenes, this story impulsively spawns into the world of Ben 10 and ends just as suddenly. It exists just to have the right to say, See? Kevin's not really an alien. And honestly, what kind of story is that? Was it really necessary for the crew to act like they had an obligation to change Kevin's origin based on outdated, vague ideas of what Kevin could have been and a Bandai card? And with that, do writers' personal thoughts on a subject even matter when the canon universes are concerned? Besides, Omniverse had no problem ignoring out-of-universe lore, so long as it suited them. Ben Victor originally had super intelligence, and was said to have been a vital transformation in the creation of Kenny's Omnitrix. The charms of Bazel came from an alternate dimension called Bazel, where the warriors wore face paint. Facts like these were also never actually brought up in canon, and because of that, 
was promptly ignored so that Omniverse could tell its own stories. So if the only information about Kevin being a mutant came from early concepts in the minds of the writers, why couldn't that have been something Omniverse ignored? That is where I find holes in the proclamation that Omniverse makes Ben 10 more like classic. Because it's not about quote-unquote fixing UAF's lore. It's not about making Omniverse more like classic. And if it was truly about correcting UAF's lore, why were other developments that UAF made not changed? UAF gave us the Galactic Plumbers, Azmuth being a president-like figure for the Galvin, canonizing Race Against Time Sandra and Carl over the originals. By the fixing logic, all of these should have been retconned as well, but instead they were kept, and even developed further by Omniverse, despite contradicting the classic series. Yet, Kevin's backstory specifically gets targeted, so it's not really about being more like classic. The Omniverse crew wanted to do it just to satisfy themselves. Sure, UAF writers did the same a few times too, notably with Magic, but the UAF crew has always been open about the changes they've made, and it feels disingenuous when the Omniverse crew does it too, but blankets their intentions as being a savior of continuity. The UAF crew had no ill intentions to the classic series that came before, and made changes to benefit their story, not just for the sake of changing the lore aimlessly. In fact, Osmosians were still considered aliens behind the scenes as late into Omniverse's run as 2013. So the Rooters were never a core intention of the show either, showing it was not initially part of their brigade to bring back some of classic's integration into Ben 10. But here's where things get really shaky. I've always been skeptical about the idea that the classic crew really thought of Kevin as a mutant when writing him. Although, on the off chance it was true, I explored that avenue and made my arguments against the validity of non-relevant information outside of the canon series. But still, something never felt right to me, so I wanted to explore it further. I've come to find that there's no actual evidence that classic Kevin being thought of as a mutant is even the truth. The only person who has said something even close to that is Derek J. Wyde himself, with no other crew member to back his statement up. But a lack of evidence does not mean confirmation, so I decided to ask someone myself. Duncan Rallo, one-fourth man of action and creator of the classic series, is also pretty active on social media, so I reached out to him, asking what he thought about all of the Kevin retcons, or if he even considered them retcons in the first place. And while creator statements themselves have their validity in flux. With this scenario, as Duncan was actually there firsthand during the classic series development, and was directly involved in the creation of the character, his word has the most credibility here. Duncan disagrees that there was ever any origin for classic to begin with, and contradicting Derek's belief was never directly thought of as a mutant it was always kept ambiguous and vague. He also agrees that since UAF only expanded on Kevin without changing anything in the show, that the Osmosian alien lore is in fact an evolution of the character and not a retcon. As I've said before, I kept the discussion about how a writer's own perspective on their work actually matters when the direct canon is considered, just in case there's a chance that the classic writers really did believe Kevin was a mutant when writing him. But now, it seems unlikely. With this idea exclusively coming from Derek, with no other crew member saying something similar, along with Duncan saying otherwise, it stands to reason that this is another scenario where Derek had gotten confused and accidentally believed something something that was not true. By another scenario, yes, I am saying that this has happened before. If you follow a URL that I will link in the description, you will see a record of information that was falsely added to the continuity of the show via the Ben 10 wiki. The usual summary of these events is a user will just add something to the wiki without sources, presumptuously just because they like the idea. For example, that Dr. Animo's middle name is James. This edit will be so small, and it will be over looked for years, and as time passes, and crew members rotate in and out of working on Ben 10, perhaps they will rely on the Ben 10 wiki to pull information from the shows they didn't work on to catch them up to speed. Seeing that Dr. Animo's middle name is James on the wiki, this is then added to the episode, making the random user's impulsive edit to the wiki now canon to the show. Over the past few years, the wiki has made strenuous efforts to clean up their sources and become much more credible in pre 
previous years, which is why this page exists to begin with. But the damage relying on the wiki is also evident, and you will see Derek has fallen victim to this as well. As Derek was not around for the classic series, the wiki seemed like the next best source of information to the average person, and Derek has elaborated on wiki-only information as if it was fact in subjects such as apoplexia, the inert system, and the containment suit aliens. And with the classic series, its expanded media, and now the classic crew themselves, all never stating anywhere that Kevin used to be a mutant, the sole strand of evidence all links back to that obstreperous Bandai information card. The very card that contradicts what those who actually worked on the show has said. Now this doesn't prove that this card is in fact the definitive catalyst for this misinformation, but it seems to be the sole, tangible perpetrator of this belief. And fans of Wyatt's work can protest that he was an avid toy collector and most likely has seen this card before. But whether or not the card was the cause for this discourse, or perhaps Derek was misremembering another undisclosed incident. It's safe to say that the idea that the classic series crew thought of Kevin as a mutant isn't as true as we thought. It is at the very least debatable and no longer a solid fact. I am not faulting Derek J. Wyatt as a person whatsoever, so please don't turn this into something that it's not. But the conclusion seems to be that Derek falsely believed that Kevin was a mutant in the classic series combined with his clear bias against against UAF's direction, and he created the narrative that Kevin was always meant to be a mutant in the classic series, and the fans decided to roll with it in order to accept the Rooters retcon. But let me be clear, I still think the Rooters arc has a lot of interesting angles. I like the origin for the Plumber's Helpers, and I like how it also ties into Kevin's past trying to escape the Null Void. I also think Cervantes is my favorite Omniverse villain. Everything about him is enjoyable to me. but. But while the story of the Rooters can still be enjoyed despite what it is, was it really worth the mess it created? Whether or not you enjoy the retcon, it wouldn't really be correct at this point to pretend that UAF retconned Kevin's backstory in the first place. To recap our timeline, Classic Kevin had no origin, UAF Kevin gave him one, and Omniverse retconned it. That is truly what happened. There are a lot of pros to the Rooters arc, which for a fair portion of the community is enough for them to prefer this explanation of Osmosians over UAFs. Others still cling to UAFs origins as the superior tale, and the rest simply don't care anymore and are tired of discussing it. And that's about where I'm heading. I still have the Omniverse Breakdown series to get through in the future, but I also want to break down the Omniverse episodes as is and not have to worry about about discussing this. So once I get there, I'll probably just link back to this video, and we can all move on from the subject. Now, of course, some of you may expect me to bring up the Cervantes lied theory, which admittedly has holes in it too. No version of the story, canon or not, makes 100% sense anymore. Regardless, love it or hate it, the human mutant explanation is the true canon explanation as of the Rooter's arc, and only a future development of the original Prime continuity has the right to change that, which is unlikely. But for fun, you can always check out five years later. I hope you all have a great start to your year, and as always, keep it fizzy. <laughs>